Holler if you hear me, and welcome to this edition of Luke Covers, because we are now reaching the end of the train that wreck, more like it, that is Velma. But guess what? There's now reports of there being a Velma season two, because Hollywood hates you. Or at the very least, Hollywood just is so in denial about itself that it's just lashing out at you for how much it has its own personal issues and they mistake the audience for their psychiatrist or for some kind of rage room. Yes, yeah, so you've heard about those, the rage rooms where you'll have these uh, people, they'll go and have these rooms full of all kinds of weapons and other kinds of things that they can go and destroy with these weapons to, you know, get the anger out. They'll go and completely just smash everything you see within a three-yard radius of them. Well, pretty much when it comes to the world of Minnie Kaling, we see that Velma is her rage room, and the objects she's destroying in the room are everything that people loved about Scooby-Doo over the years. Because, well, remember, they just can't, absolutely, positively cannot and will not help themselves in going and doing something more constructive or actually creative with their energies. Well, really, it's less energies and more like neuroses and anger and insecurities because uh, one good look at somebody like Mindy Kaling, and you certainly know that this is not a woman who really is uh, somebody who, in the very least, is just, you know, stable with herself and is all right with her station in life and all right with herself and her self-image. Turns out, no, this is not a self-actualized person. This is all a self-image actualized person. This is the kind of person who do desperately wants to go and tell everybody about how she is like this or she is like that and and if she ever really did have the stability ever they really have the emotional uh, let's say intelligence to go and have a life where she can go and be a comedy actress be even a writer producer whatever and do it to not transmogrify everything she sees into a reason to either pos posture herself as being the greatest thing since sliced blood and do everything she can to destroy anybody that comes in her way. E.g., the reason why she takes such sadistic pride in the show in demonizing the Fred character to the point where they literally have a plot point in Velma where Fred's mother is trying to cut open Velma's head and put her brain in Fred's body so that Fred can run her business in the future. Because they'll take her seriously, Velma, if she were a straight white man. And if you don't think that this is the kind of shrieking batshit instability and a complete unhinged ravings that are usually affiliated with Alex Jones or people making fun of Alex Jones, then, uh, wow, you might actually be one of the people involved in the production of this show. Because if you... Uh, the problem with... Uh, the kind of people, the types like Mindy who do these kind of productions, they're not really doing it as a joke. They don't really think about this as something where, oh, they're being absurd. It is done in such a manner where you know that they actually believe what it is they're saying. They are the Scientologist who explains to you their creation myth, and then you slowly start walking backwards while keeping your eye on them so they won't try to do anything dangerous, and slowly dialing 911 in your pocket uh, before eventually you get to the safe distance where then you can feel like you'll be able to run away and they won't be able to catch you or shoot you because we've got some people going on in this world where, yeah, this world, and by this world, I mean the world of modern Hollywood, modern entertainment industry, where they seem to go out of their way to be completely just as unstable as possible to the point where if you actually might even come to this situation or why is this going on? Why even the rumor of a Velma show? What about this show has the kind of production values where it is something where we are absolutely positively not able to get out of a pre-fabricated multi-season deal, like say something that was as expensive as the Rings of Power or a film that already had so much writing on it, has so much of a budget behind it, and is so much potentially a catalyst to go and have the universe rewritten in the way where they can now go and do something new with it, like with the Flash movie over at DC, where, okay, they'll bite the bullet and just do what they can to deal with Ezra Miller, you know, whatever kind of uh, probation he's going under, whatever kind of rehab he's going under, in order to keep it out there, keep it going, keep it moving forward, so that then we can get on to something that would be a little more successful. But with Velma, what is this? 
the only entertaining thing about this is to watch people like me or anyone else out there, nerd, Roddick, what have you, go and rip this apart, or in the very least, just question, what is this, who is this for? The first cornerstone of any piece of entertainment is, who are you making this for? And I sincerely, absolutely, positively do not know who uh, this is being made for, except for maybe Mindy Kaling herself. Because remember what I've been saying about people like her in the modern Hollywood, especially Mindy Kaling, long before there was even this explosion of woke going on. She was the kind of person who, remember the Mindy Project, absolutely positively cannot do or write or act in anything that isn't about her ego, no herself, no real concern. Here's the person to whom actively went and threatened the careers of men, of producers, I believe it was, when she went and improvised a forced kiss on an actor on the set of The Mindy Project. She went up and said, okay, well, threatening these actors' jobs. Now, of course, uh, the prerequisite, how would this happen if it were a man, a comedy male actor who was doing this? We all know they would have immediately been fired. They would have immediately been given headlines. Or if this was something that retroactively was exposed, like what happened with Kaling, you know they would not let this stand without having it be a 40-piece brass band funeral for this guy's career. Unless, of course, it was Jimmy Kimmel. Then he can go right back on to doing Jimmy Kimmel Live, even though the show has ratings that make modern WWE feel a lot better about themselves and a history of things that includes details like blackface. Yes, doing blackface repeatedly or going to Venice Beach with a petition to stop women's suffrage. For those who don't know what that means, yes, women's right to vote or going up and down Southern California asking women randomly in public if they would like to have sex with them. Yeah, uh, of course, this is the world where Mindy Kaling can go and say things that would get other lesser creators, or at least by lesser creators, I mean people with lesser pronouns and lesser melanin counts and lesser worldviews, to go and get the kind of career-destroying thing that would usually be like her well-known to have tweeted and liked tweets of J.K. Rowling which in the modern day has made her in, would make anybody else to a complete pariah right alongside Miss Rowling. And no wonder in this world we're seeing today, you've got a lady who now is actually so hated in her productions and in her work that you even have the people on that kind of super left, slurpy-headed attitude that it was deliberately pandering to. Remember, we have a plot point where a well, a woman who runs a business wants to take a old teenage girl's brain and put it in her straight white male son because then that means that only her straight white male son will be able to inherit or take over the business, but uh, she will be a complete idiotic failure and loser because, well, someone on that staff and the cast or the crew is projecting so damn large it could be fit across an IMAX screen. And even then, I think it would actually be bigger than IMAX. So uh, you think that this is not a situation that would immediately go for the if you don't like it, don't watch it, peace type of frost crowd. But guess what? You've got now even really reliable people like Forbes, Forbes magazine going on and showing the tweets, showing the receipts of people's reaction to this, of making it look like uh, criticizing it understandably as like a right wing YouTuber's understanding of a progressive show. And it, when the audience that we were clearly making this for, or in the very least the closest approximation to an audience you were making this for, because remember, this wasn't really made for anybody. This was Mindy Kaling and her partner in crime or crimes against popular beloved intellectual properties wanted to just go and do whatever would be about themselves. So it's She-Hulk all over again. It's at least when it came to the likes of Lena Dunham with girls, she was doing it with her own, you know, quote unquote, intellectual property, her own quote-unquote characters and storylines. So, well, that that's something where you're making us now in a world where we are appreciating Lena Dunham actually just making her own thing. Yes, it's an insufferable droning bore, but it's an insufferable droning bore that isn't doing anything to destroy a very bankable, profitable, likable IP in the name of some coastal elitist who needs to grandstand about their 
the externalization of their pathetic problems, their body image issues, because for all these women who are supposed to be so sophisticated and articulate, they really do seem to really boil everything back down to the most shallow of problems that a woman can stereotypically have in America, which is to be just really neurotic about her body or her face instead of you know, really focusing on what they are as a person, you know, on the inside, what their intellect is, what their, you know, emotional base of stability is. No, it's about, uh, oh, if I don't fit into the image of the Victoria's Secret model, then I'm going to go and make their Victoria's Secret models all look dumb. Or if, or the other way, I'm just going to go and make them all look like me and say it's in the name of inclusivity instead of self-important stupidity. And that's not my opinion. I know I'm right. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Subscribe if you're new. Check if you're still subscribed if you're returning. I recently did get into actual contact with the YouTube community, YouTube support over my uh, monetization. Still, my channel has not been monetized, but now there, in the very least, is now being some acceleration in, how, in the delay of my monetization application. So we might be seeing that come around in the future. But until then, please shop at my Square store where my pen and ink art is 25 bucks, my color art is 30 bucks, my sketchbooks are 25 bucks. I have posters for 200 and trading cards for 10. You can also commission a pen and ink piece for 50, a color piece for 60, or a trading card for 20. And whatever you buy only comes with a flat $5 shipping and handling fee. And whatever uh, you want, you can also simply donate any dollar amount you'd like. Donations are the first thing you see in the store and can come in any denomination from around the world. So if you live outside of America, remember my store can't receive orders from foreign addresses. So you would have to make your purchase or commission via a donation. Just add up what you want in U.S. dollars, include another 25 U.S. for the international shipping and handling fee. Your items will ship immediately. My birthday is coming up on 19th and on February 24th and 25th, I'll be a vendor at the Great Lakes Comic Con at the Macomb Expo Center in Warren, Michigan. Hope to see you there. And remember, felines, slam it, lick it, suck it, and see you, Space Cowboy.